Hello friends. Welcome back to another video of my channel. In this video, I will give you a guidance on how you can load a texter from the web, save it to the local device storage and load a texter from local storage. If you are interested in this, then let's begin this video. In this channel we produce a content related to game development using the Unity 3D game engine and designing through different popular softwares on a regular basis. So if you are interested in this then don't forget to subscribe to the channel plus you can visit our website to see the content that we already worked on and published in the market. Now let's begin the video. Let me first explain to you the basic setup I did for this demo project. Just a normal camera and a canvas with 4 buttons to specify different click events and one sample image to show a loaded texture. At last, empty game object with image upload download controller script attached to control the whole image downloading, saving and loading related task. I have filled the script with all the proper testing information and attached it with the UI components too. Sample image is linked with the script texture image and all four buttons click event attached with respective click events too. Now let's move towards the actual coding part and explain to you how actually I did this. Total 4 click events with their actions I have grouped like this way so it becomes easy for you to understand. Now let's start with the first 3 serialized field variables. First texture image to show actual image content. The second image URL which is the test URL to load the image from the web and third file name to use when we save and load the file. Next is our first click event which actually loads an image from the web URL. For this we need a coroutine to wait for an infinite time or I can say up to the time we have some reply from the web request that we do. To retrieve image data from a web server Unity has a special class for this named Unity Web Request Texture which has get texture method to make calls related to an image request. In return type we get a superclass named unity web request as a reference. Next the coroutine will wait for some time to get a response from the call of request method. If you want then you can read more about coroutine and unity web request I have attached a link to both topics in the description section. After we get some response, directly we will check there is some error in the response or not. If yes, then directly print it on the screen, otherwise move it for another part. Now to take out the texture from the Unity Web Request class reference, Unity has one more special class named Download Handler Texture and its get content method will directly return you texture to the type image texture. Finally you have to compose the sprite from the generated texture to the image using sprite.create method. It has three arguments that you have to provide texture to the image, image rect and image pivot and this generated sprite will directly set to our on screen sample image and at last we are changing sample image size to native image size. Now our first button click event is over. Our next click event is to load the image from the local storage. For this directly we check the availability of file within the local storage through file.exist method. We need a path with the file name to check the availability of a specific file. For this Unity defined application dot persistent data path variable becomes really useful because it provides the location where 
the game can store its data securely for different platforms it has a different locations or path to store the data within the local storage now if we can't able to find the file then we have to return from here otherwise we have to move ahead to load the texture from the local storage the first thing we have to do is read bytes from local storage for the file we have to load as an image and this we can do with file dot read all bytes method as you can see we need to provide the file path and its name as an argument next we have to create an empty texture to the object so later on we can place image content in it now this texture to the object has load image method which can accept byte data in it and it can compose a texture for us again the same thing we have to create a sprite object from texture to the object and we can achieve this through sprite dot create method so this is our bool code to load texture image from the local disk storage our next click event is to save the image content to local storage within the click event directly we check for the image content is available or not if it's null then directly we can return otherwise we can move ahead with the saving process we can only write bytes within the local storage so first we have to convert our image data into bytes this we can do through this way first we have to access sprite of our sample image then texture 2d of our sprite and last we call encode to png method of texture 2d which can return bytes data in array form now we have to write this bytes data in local storage through file dot write all bytes method at specific path that is it for writing texture data into local storage at last we have one more click event to make image content blank and this we can achieve by assigning image sprite value to null this click event becomes useful to use in multiple load and unload testing of images okay friends now let's test the whole thing in unity editor first click on load image button from the web server and it's loaded successfully second click on the blank image button to make the image content blank so we can load another time third click on save image button and it's giving a no image to save error custom message as nothing exists to save on disk fourth load the image from a web server and click on the save button to save it within the local storage and it's showing a success message fifth make the image blank and load it again from the local storage that we have saved a few seconds ago and it is successful too so all operations completed successfully and i hope you learned something from this video so don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to watch more game development related videos bye